Okay, Friday, Congress passed the cap and trade, the cap and tax, the steal your more, steal more money from the average person, ta average person legislation. Uh, they passed it by a vote of 219 to 212, with uh, eight Republicans voting yes. Um, the eight Republicans. One came from California, one came from Oregon, one came from Washington, two from New Jersey, one from Illinois, and one from New York, and I think that's it. I think that's only seven. Anyway, um, Friday morning I called uh, uh, my legislator's office, Randy Nagabauer, and I asked him, I, I, well, I asked his staff, I said, uh, what does this bill mean? I'm in the manufacturing business. What does this bill mean for manufacturing? He said, I don't know. Nobody knows. I said, well, okay, I live in a community where uh, the uh, two major uh, providers of electricity run gas-powered plant plants. I said, what does that mean? He said, uh, well, you can uh, probably take the president as words when he says that uh, utility bills will necessarily skyrocket. I said, well, that's great. I said, well, what does that mean for uh, for the local farmers, the local farming industry? My manufacturing business that I work in um, does a lot of work with the farmers in this area. What does that mean for them? He said, well, and that's not necessarily clear either. And I said, well, what is clear about this legislation? He said, nothing. There's not a thing clear about this legislation. And that's why Randy Nagelbauer is going to vote no. Okay, well, Randy Nagelbauer voted no. That's great. Um, but it still passed. So we've got a 1,200-page a piece of legislation that became over 1,500 pages the very day that it was to be voted on and they only allowed five hours of debate well this is what I can gather from what I can find out about this legislation Nancy Pelosi stood on the floor of the house and said this is a jobs bill let's vote for jobs 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 that's a lie this is not a jobs bill this bill will destroy Four times more jobs than it will create in green industries. You can't, you cannot use the government to legislate technology. When there becomes a demand for a certain technology and that technology becomes profitable and the production becomes profitable, then somebody will do it. You cannot force it through legislation through the government. The government cannot force this kind of thing. And that's what this bill is trying to do. This bill wants to force private industry to invest in markets where there is no profit at the moment. And that's going to cost more jobs. Like I said, for every job that's created, there's going to be four lost. But you're not going to hear about the four jobs that are lost. You're going to hear about the one job that was created. Uh, the CEO of ConocoPhillips today said, well, if this passes the Senate, then what we're going to have to do is start shutting down fuel plants. We'll stop. We'll just stop polluting in the United States and start importing the fuel from uh, from out of the country. Well, this legislation was supposed to be the legislation that reduces our dependence on foreign fuel. And here we have the the uh, CEO of a major oil company saying, we just won't refine it here. We won't be refining it because it creates too much pollution, according to the government. So... All I can say about this cap and trade bill is that you've got 1,500 pages of legislation that nobody read. 
that they all voted on and the people who voted for it have no idea what they voted for. And those who do know what they voted for have voted to destroy the American middle class. That's all there is to it. That's what cap and trade is going to do. It's going to add more money, more costs to us as consumers because it's going to be a pass along cost. It's going to be passed along in our electric bills. It's going to be passed along in our in the cost of our gasoline, cost of our diesel, cost of our natural gas. It's going to be passed along. And they're not going to call it a tax, but that's what it is. It's a tax. Plain and simple. Barack Obama broke a promise. I'm not going to tax the middle class. I'm not going to tax the poor. I'm not going to raise taxes on anybody who makes less than $250,000. Well... Apparently, $2,000 a year added to our electric bill for cap and trade is uh, not a tax. And also, that doesn't even bring into the, to the argument the, the fact that the people who are actually going to win in this deal are going to be the Wall Street, the people who are going to trade, the offsets these are going to start becoming publicly traded uh, traded entities they're going to be commodities carbon offsets which have to be traded as part of the cap and trade anybody who goes over their cap has to trade for more and they're going to be traded on wall street the, the brokers on wall street the evil brokers on wall street that that barack obama has chastised and and berated and belittled for the past six months are the ones who are going to make out on this. They're going to make out huge with cap and trade. So I encourage everybody to contact your senator, especially the guys, in, the people in blue states. The people in blue states, your senators. If, they, if they're considering voting yes on this, you definitely want to call them and let them know that if they vote yes on cap and trade and kill this many jobs and destroy the middle class and put the poor people in even deeper in the hole, then you will support the block of concrete that anybody else runs against them. And that's what I would do. And I will be calling Kay Bailey Hutchison. I will be calling... John Cornyn, and letting them know that uh, they need to vote no on this because this is bad, bad legislation. Bad legislation. It's a jobs killer, not a jobs creator. It's not a jobs killer. 